Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist and an extension of our videos about being married to a Japanese person. The video we released a couple of days ago about marriages struggling, marriages to Japanese people struggling. This is a, a second part of that or another part of that because of the reactions we got to it, sort of as expected really, there's a whole lot of people who were sort of like, woo, don't know if I could deal with that. And interestingly, there was also a whole bunch of people who had experienced it themselves, um, or there's a couple other people there who seems to have studied a lot of psychology who seemed to understand what it was about as well. So interesting, probably you could gain as much information and knowledge on the topic from reading the comments on that video as you could from read from actually watching the video itself so if you didn't read the comments if you didn't have a look at the comments on that video have a look at the comments because there's a lot of a lot of observations and experience on that in that comment section that it was really worthwhile really worthwhile so if you haven't had a look at that already have a look at it that video was called Jap uh, Struggling Japanese Marriage or something like that. Have a look at the comments on there. For some really insightful information, uh, the, the common response to a lot of these how-to videos about being married to a Japanese person or about living in Japan in general, a common response we get from lots and lots of people is, oh, geez, I couldn't handle that. And it's sort of like being married to a Japanese person is, is like the ultimate the ultimate example of living with Japanese culture because if you're a single person living in Japan there's certain things that you got to put up with and sort of things certain things you got to do and sort of got to handle really if you if you want to live sort of reasonably harmoniously here there's certain things that you have to do or that you, it's better to do and that's sort of inevitable but but being married to a Japanese person takes it one step further because as a single person in Japan living in an apartment or something, there's certain things that, you know, certain behaviors that you can sort of indulge yourself with um, out of the eye of the public sort of thing. But when you're married to a Japanese person, you're living and breathing that cultural thing all the time. So whether you're in Japan or not, I mean, one person said that his experience was that his wife had lived outside Japan for a few years, quite a few years by the sound of it, and she'd done a degree at university and a master's and a PhD or something at university, so she'd had extensive experience, life experience outside Japan and had had sort of become a bit westernized as a result, so her thinking, her thinking about socialization and th her thinking about a lot of things had sort of become a bit more westernized and that can happen but it's really really rare the, the one guy that said that the one person who said that said that you know oh no she came back different but then the response from other people to that was well mine didn't <laughs> you know and and that's usually the case so so we know both examples we know a lady who actually lived in a western country and did a phd in communications and spent a lot of time with foreigners for years and years and years and actually sort of studying the subject because indirectly through studying communications and language she ended up studying a lot of the cultural stuff as well and she did actually take it on board so we do know someone who, who is like that and she does get it and you can talk to her about these topics and she'll be quite quite switched on about it as well however she is a rare exception you know, we know a lot more Japanese people who've lived in other countries for a long time. And, and it's the same as us. It's the same as the, the, the non-Japanese person who comes and lives in Japan. You know, you can live in Japan for 20 years and your, your feelings, your thoughts, your understanding intellectually of what's going on around you may improve. But, but it's whether you can, your feelings about what's happening around you are... Uh, how, how they're adjusting, how you're, how you're adjusting the way you feel about what's happening. And that's inevitably what you find, is that, is that most people, the reason that people live here for 10, 15, 20 years and then go back to their own country is, ultimately, they still feel the same as they did when they first came here. And even though intellectually, and this is the same thing as the Japanese people, intellectually they can understand the Western way, 
but their feeling doesn't change and that brings us to all these other things so so some of the comments some of the other comments referred to things like like compassion and things like that lack of compassion and things like that and and, and that's that's a big one that's a really really big one in Japanese culture we've we made videos about this before compassion you rarely experience compassion in Japan you really do you, you can be having all sorts of mental or physical suffering going on and compassion is really rare you know they've got some of the best best health services in the world here in Japan no doubt about it and as you've seen in our healthcare playlist we've experienced lots of it firsthand operations and all sorts of things and they're really really good at what they do but compassion is not one of the things you know and in the videos we've made about modern parenting in Japan you know, compassion isn't something. You just don't see it. You don't see com compassion shown between family members, between co-workers, between anybody. You just, examples of compassion here are really, really rare. And and, and if it does exist, it, it's not expressed the way as it is in most other cultures. So it just almost doesn't exist. It's sort of like, if you, if, you know, those people who look at these things and say, oh, I couldn't live with that, I couldn't handle it, you know, then you're probably right you're probably right, you, you probably couldn't. And, and if you're in a relationship with a Japanese person, it probably wouldn't last long term. If, if that's your initial reaction to these things, then that's probably the, the truth. It's probably the reality. The only way to really survive a relationship like this, and then, again, this is not always the case, but it usually is. The only real way to survive a relationship with a, with a Japanese person like this is to take your expectations back to zero because the problem tends to be that our expectations of what a relationship is are different. So a Japanese person's grown up with their mother and father and aunts and uncles and neighbours and everybody else having a Japanese style relationship. So, you know, they don't see, there's no, they don't see any physical affection between their parents. They don't hear any compassion between their parents. If the, if the father comes home exhausted after a big day, you know, the wife's just going to say, Genbare, you know, try harder, keep trying. And, you know, they're not going to see compassion. They're not going to see physical contact. They're not going to see all those things. And, and for them, the, the idea of a normal relationship is that the father just, the husband just puts in, you know, goes to work and works himself to death, you know, many, many hours a week and 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 works and works and works and, and does his, fulfills his responsibilities in the family and the, the usually, not always the case, but usually the, the, the wife runs the family, the runs the household and controls everything just about, makes most of the decisions in the family and and controls the budget usually and the and all that sort of thing. This is the background that they're coming from. And then we're coming from whatever culture we've come from with what we've grown up with, you know? And if we're lucky to have grown up in, in, a, in a home where mum and dad were close and affectionate and sympathetic and compassionate and all those good things and communicated well and everything else, that's our expectations of what a good relationship is, you know? And if you go into a relationship with, with a Japanese person and you've got your expectations that it's going to be like, the relationships that, that you have always thought were ideal then it's it's probably not going to work because that's not what it's it's probably not what you're going to get the only real way the only real way to survive it is to sort of take right at the beginning take take your expectations back to zero and i mean that's a really hard thing to do but it's sort of what you got to do you got to take your expectations back to zero and if there's certain things in your life that you need fulfilling like compassion well there's a fair chance you're never really going to get that from any Japanese person. There's a fair chance, you know. And if you do, it's only going to be skin deep. Quite often people people listen to comments like that on these videos and say, Oh, that's not true. My Japanese friends, you know. One guy recently was saying how, how affectionate his Japanese friends are. Well, yeah, there are exceptions to this. But quite often what you're seeing isn't really what you think it is. You know, it, that, that, that guy was talking about his Japanese friends, you know, being really affectionate. I'd be more willing to bet that it was the Westerners that were being affectionate and the Japanese people were going along with it. And that's, and that's quite often the case. And the, the things that, you know, you're not going to get compassion. If, you, if you're suffering or you've got some, some thing that you're having trouble with or whatever it is, you know, you're, not, you're probably not going to get compassion from your Japanese friends. And we've, we've talked about this before. You know, complaining, don't complain. 
It's not what they do. They don't talk about their problems. They don't, they don't talk about their problems. They don't talk about anything negative. They don't talk about anything that they're struggling with. You know, they, they just don't do it. And your partner won't want you to do it either. So quite often, if they're things like that, like compassion that you need, then you probably have to get it somewhere else. And usually the best place to get that from is your, is your home family. So wherever it is that you've come from, and these days with the computers and the internet and Skype and all that sort of stuff, that's really your best bet. You know, if you want compassion, really, then what you've got to do is sit down, sit down on Skype on your own, you know, um, now and again, and have a big chat on Skype with a family member from from your whole, from your old country, you know, your mum or your dad or your sister or your brother or, you know, your cousin or someone your, your close friend or somebody somebody who you know cares about you and gives you genuine compassion and sit there and have a big talk to them for an hour or two you know about what's going on in your life and, and, and get your compassion from them because you know you, you're not going to get it from your partner you'll get other things I mean you know th- th- there's a lot of positive things about being in a relationship with a Japanese person all these things that, that when we talk about them sound negative if you take your expectations back to zero, a lot of these things that I'm talking about actually become positives. So another one, another one just flashed into my head then was was um, jealousy. One one lady brought up that her Japanese husband had, you know, didn't understand her jealousy. He, he used to spend time with other ladies, and I mean, again, we've talked about this before on a previous video that you know your Japanese husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend will go out with their old friends from school. You know, and not come back till four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, and you can't ask them about it because any sort of questions you can say, "Did you have a good time?" and that's about all you can ask. You can't ask any more than that, or you're going to sound like you, you don't trust them and you're being jealous and you're being possessive and and that sort of thing, and they won't accept that at all. So you just have to you just have to go. Did you have a good time? Yes, great. We'll leave it at that. And so any sort of signs of possessiveness or jealousy or insecurity or anything like that from you will receive zero compassion and will just broaden the gap. Any These behaviours that we're talking about, it's the same as with all the stuff on the How To playlist. A lot of people say, I wouldn't do that, no way I could do that. Well, that's fine too. But the, the, all the things that are being talked about here are the things if you want to have the, the most positive relationship positive uh, possible. And, and the you know any sort of sign of of jealousy or or insecurity or anything like that or lack of trust or anything like that with your Japanese partner is just going to send them further away from you. They're going to think less of you for it and have less respect for you for it and and feel f- even less close to you. As a result, you just cannot do it. You cannot do it. And again, there's a lot of these things at first can be really really difficult. But there's two sides to the coin. The, the, the other thing is that in return, you're not going to have a partner that's going to get jealous and possessive, right? So, so this is the thing. If you take your expectations back to zero and then go forward from there and just experience the relationship for what it is, then a lot of these things that at, at first might seem negative, if you can... It takes a lot of maturity. To be honest, it takes a lot of maturity and, and, and there'd be... You know, it, it takes a lot of maturity to take a lot of these things and accept a lot of these things. And for a young person, this would be even harder, of course. You know, for everybody it's difficult, but it does take a lot of maturity to just be able to bite your tongue. And, and, and you've got to learn, you've got to remember what's okay to do and what's not okay to do. What's going to be helpful and what's going to be productive and useful to the relationship and what's going to be negative and damaging to the relationship. And you've got to remember that and 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 have a lot of self-discipline because you know when your partner does come in at four o'clock in the morning drunk and stumbling around and happy as and and obviously had a great time and it's four or five in the morning and they said they'd be home at 10 (laughs) and it's four or five in the morning and some mysterious person dropped them off outside the house in their car and you know you've got to remember did you have fun yes great that's it and be nice and happy and positive and, and it, you know, don't show any negative emotion. That's what you got to do. Show, show the discipline. And then, if you can play these games, if you can, if you can, if you can remember these things, what's going to be productive? What's not going to be productive? And then, take your expectations back to zero and, and go forward from there. 
then a lot of these things will turn around to be actually be positive things because you won't come home from being out with your friends and get hassled by your Japanese partner about where you've been or what you've been doing or who you've been with. You know, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to have a jealous Japanese partner because for the reasons I just mentioned, it's not, they see it as really, really uncool. So even if they do have some suspicions, you know, if you walk in the door smelling of perfume or, you know, something like that, even if they do have some suspicions, they won't say anything. They won't say anything. Most likely, 99% of the time, it's really unlikely that they say anything. And there's, there's a lot of other things like that too. In this, in this style of relationship that the Japanese people have, you know, there, there, are, there are some positive things about it. And it, it's not all bad. You know, the, the struggling is, the struggling is, or the difficult part of it is, is that difference between our expectations and the reality of the relationship. That, that's where people suffer, and that's what we see all the time. And you can see examples of that in the comments section. <clears throat> when people leave the comments under these videos, you know, I couldn't live with that, I couldn't handle that, there's no way I'd put up with that. When, when you feel like that about the situation, then, then you're right. You probably can't live with it. You know, because nobody can live like that. You can't, you can't live with regret and resentment and disappointment every day because you're frustrated because the things that you really, really want out of the relationship you can't have. You know, if you've got that feeling constantly, feeling like that, then you're not going to have a real happy life, are you? So, you know, this is why, and again, cannot make a video on this topic without saying again that most relationships between non-Japanese people and Japanese people fail for these reasons. So, trying to stay positive on this on these videos about about what you can do, because you know there are people who are already in relationships with Japanese people, and particularly the people with kids. People that don't have kids, you know, it's easier to walk away, isn't it? You know, but the people with kids, you know, can really feel you. A couple of people have sort of told us their stories a bit on this, and you know, you've got. 100% compassion from me, right? Because I know what that's like. You know, when things are tough, you, you know, and maybe if you if you didn't have kids, you'd just walk away. But when you've got kids, you don't want to walk away from your kids. And, you know, if you, if you do everything you possibly can, it's not easy. Most of the time, relationships will fail between Japanese people and non-Japanese people. However, there are exceptions. There was one guy left a comment in the comment thing said he'd been with his wife for 100 years or something 50 years 54 years he'd been with his Japanese wife and life was great and he had a 51 year old daughter and it was all good so there are exceptions now personally I've got through it as well um, possibly because I'm old I think maturity definitely plays a part in it that you can put up with a lot more because you've got a more of a big picture on things and Perhaps you've picked up a few skills during your life that have helped you to deal with it, but you know it can be really difficult. And the people, the people <coughs> that, that we know who have reasonably healthy relationships between non-Japanese and Japanese people, usually they've had pretty hard times to get there. It's a struggle, and it's not one-sided. The, the impression that you might get from these videos, and a couple of people have said, "Oh, why do we have to do all the changing?" Why is it we have to do all the changing, the adapting, and why do we have to change our thinking and feelings? Well, it's a, it's a two-way street. Japanese person who's with a foreigner has to do a lot of adapting as well. It's really hard for them. There's this endless list of stuff that they have to put up with as well. If you're married and they've got your name, there's a big one right there. And then, you know, they're married to a foreigner. Every day there's going to be some reminder of that. So they've got lots of stuff as well. The bottom line is though, that in any relationship, thinking about what the other person should do, and this is this is another thing, we see people leave comments and say, Japanese people shouldn't do that, they should do this, and, and all that sort of stuff. There's no point to that thinking. You know, that sort of thinking, if you have that sort of thinking, you won't survive a relationship in it with a Japanese person either. Because if you're thinking about what they should do, and they shouldn't do, and well, you know, it's what they do. And that's the thing with these how-to videos. We've got, what, 150 of them, 180 of them or something. And there's inevitably someone who says, they shouldn't do that, they should do this, and that's no good because of this and that. You know, that's all fine that people have their opinions on it, but that sort of thinking won't help you. 
at all, you know, obviously. What we have to look at is we have to accept the way it is, you know. And again, people say, oh, if you don't do anything, if you don't complain, nothing will change, you know. There's always people, always comments like that, that, you know, let's change everything else. Let's let's change Japanese people and let's change Japan and let's make it so it's more comfortable for us. Well, you can have that attitude if you want to. Good luck with that, right? But for the rest of us, it's it's really a waste of time to behave like that, to, to think like that. He should do this, she should do this, she shouldn't do that, she shouldn't do that. Well, you know... If that's what they're doing, that's what they're doing. In actual fact, you, you know, you're better off assuming that they're not going to change anything. It's the same as any human being. You marry any human being. If you go into it thinking that something about them is going to change after you're married, you, you're going to be disappointed. A lot of people make that mistake. Oh, once we're married, he'll stop doing that. Once we're married, she'll stop doing that. No, probably not. <clears throat> probably not. However, one thing that does happen one thing that does happen if you're in a relationship probably with anybody but within a Japanese person and you're behaving poorly if you're getting upset and frustrated and complaining and saying why don't you show me any compassion and you know why do you do that and why do you do that and why don't you do that and why don't you do that and if you're if you're doing that and making life unpleasant as far as your Japanese partner is concerned they're starting to feel like you're making life unpleasant because every day you're complaining about something or you're causing some drama which is why they'll see it if you keep raising your bringing up your issues with them that's the way they'll see it is that you're a constant hassle and when you behave like that, then you'll probably find that they won't be as giving and as caring and as as uh, as good a partner as they could be either. Whereas what you will find, if you listen to listen to what I'm saying, please, if you're listening to what I'm saying and listen to the comments that the other people are making on these videos and listen to what they're saying, and just this is only observation, right? All our how-to videos. Are just observation we watch what works and what doesn't work and the stuff that seems to work that's the stuff we tell you the stuff that doesn't work that's the stuff we ignore so that he should she shouldn't stuff that doesn't but we haven't seen that work yet right so that's why we don't use that thinking because it doesn't work so however if you if you can do these things if you can behave the way that you know will work you know, your partner comes home at four o'clock in the morning and you just say, did you have a good time? That's great. And genuinely mean it. Don't be don't be grumpy about it. Genuinely mean it. And and do all the right things. Do your things. If you're the husband, go to work and get the money and come home and be positive and be happy. That's This is what they want. Maintain the harmony. Maintain the harmony. Do your thing and maintain the harmony and fill in the gaps. If there's things with the kids, we'll get, I'll have to do another video about the kids. We're going to run out of time today. But one, one lady is talking about raising the kids. It's a huge issue. The way Japanese people raise kids and the way we do, there's big gaps in the, the way that they do. They don't show the kids any compassion. There's a whole heap of stuff that's difficult to take. But we can do it. So we can fill in the gaps. It's sort of like sometimes you've got to be like the adult. One really insightful guy said something about He said it's not politically correct, but socially Japanese people are like children. <coughs> and I agreed with him. I said, yes, you're not politically correct, but it's in, in socially, it is actually true in a lot of ways. And it's interesting, sometimes in a relationship with a Japanese person, you have to take on the role of the adult. And again, delicate thing to say, and understandably, it could offend some people, but, but the real, it, it's, a, it's a reality, is that, there's, that you've got to behave like an adult, and sometimes it becomes like an adult-child relationship in some ways. And you've got to continue to behave like an adult. You can't get down into this, into any sort of a fighting, competitive, you know, confrontational, anything like that is just going to fail. You've got to be really super adult about it. And if you can do that, if you can behave like an adult, bite your tongue, accept, accept the stuff that's a bit difficult to accept and, and behave in the way that you know is going to have the best result and don't do the stuff that's going to have a bad result. If you can do all that, what you'll find is it will be more harmonious and then you will find your partner will behave differently. I've got one buddy that's married to a Japanese lady and he reckons that when he behaves well and does what he's supposed to do, all of a sudden his favourite meals appear, appear on the table and, and she starts suddenly giving him shoulder massages and, and 
Yeah, Japanese people aren't real physically affectionate, but massage is interesting. You'll get a massage from a co-worker sometimes because it is something that they do. But the point is, if you do the right thing and behave the right way and, and, and be really adult about this and really mature about this, the results will be much, much, much better. And you will have a chance of the relationship working. And that, and that can get it can get good then it can out of time again I have to make another video about this because we've got to talk about the kids there's a big thing with the kids we've got to talk about so we'll make that one next more videos coming soon